This is Ryan Kelly Murphy on Radio Free Hillsdale 101.7 FM. And today I have joining me Mr. Douglas V. Gibbs, radio host, author, Fox News contributor, and director of civics and constitution studies for the Congress of Racial Equality. Thank you so much for joining me today, Mr. Gibbs. My pleasure. Now, you are heavily involved with getting the Constitution out there. It, honestly, it's, it seems to have been forgotten in so much of recent history, and it's not ever present in our politics today. Now, could you tell me more about what first sparked your interest in Constitution and seeking to educate others on this profound document? Well, you know, actually, it began when I was a child. When I was a kid, there was something called Schoolhouse Rock, and there, there was these after-school cartoons that kind of did a little on civics and, and mathematics and history and that kind of stuff. And the ones about American history, especially the one on the preamble, the, uh, there was a couple of others about the American Revolution, caught my interest as a kid. And uh, so I wanted to learn more about that Constitution thing. So my my mom would take me to the library, and eventually the library was enough, so I started going to the college libraries. Now, understand, I was like eight or nine at this point, and I'm going to collegiate libraries to learn about U.S. Constitution. By the time I was 15, I pretty much had it down, but it's been probably the last 10 years where I've sharpened those uh, skills. Uh, I've had a mentor that's really helped me out. I've done a lot more study. I'm more mature as an adult and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, about 10 years ago, I began writing a blog where I centered it on the Constitution. Nine years ago, I began an online radio program which centered on the Constitution. And then eight years ago, I began teaching Constitution classes in Temecula, California. Yes, it seems like you have been involved in that for some time. I've had the honor of attending some of your classes, which I always enjoyed. And you also have devoted yourself to writing books as well. Can you tell me about your recent book, uh, Concepts of the United States Constitution? Absolutely. And let me say this real quick. I've been a writer all my life, and I actually wanted to be a fiction writer at first. But when fiction, the fiction market was literally just killing me, I couldn't get it published because I was not a known name I decided to go into something I know and something I could build an audience with, which was the Constitution. Uh, Concepts of the United States Constitution is actually my fourth book. Uh, the first two, uh, the first one is called 25 Myths of the United States Constitution, goes to the different myths that we've been taught. And the second book is called The Basic Constitution, which is actually my class handouts in a book form. And after people read those books, they said, you know, informative, learned a lot, but I wish you would have gone deeper into certain concepts. Hence, concepts of the United States Constitution. It is those concepts about the Constitution that uh, people wanted to learn more about, so I went deeper into, like judicial review, the exceptions clause, um, and, and uh, birthright citizenship, things like that. Well, I definitely enjoyed uh, reading your 25 Myths of the Constitution. It opened my eyes to uh, ways of thinking about the Constitution I, I hadn't really considered before. We have Douglas V. Gibbs here, radio host, author, and constitution instructor, as well as Fox News contributor. And in, of course, in light of the recent election, there's so much going on. And we see lots of protesters saying that we should end the Electoral College, that instead we should vote for the president purely based on popul popularity. What are your thoughts on the Electoral College, and what how would you say it relates to the Constitution, and how is that relevant to today and the election? Well, my first thoughts regarding the Electoral College, or at least the first phrase that I always use, is that it protects us from the excesses of democracy. You hear uh, on television with the political pundits and the media and all that, they're always calling this country a democracy. We're not a democracy. We are a republic. And in a democracy, you vote, you go home, you're done. In a republic, there's a lot more responsibility when it comes to we the people and the states. The states are also supposed to be very involved in the functioning of the federal government. After all, it was the states that created that federal government to handle the issues that they really weren't capable of handling, mainly external issues like common defense, trade with other nations, border security, things like that. And so the Electoral College is one of only a couple items, last vestiges, if you may, uh, of our republic. Now, that said, uh, it was created uh, in Article 2, Section 1, Clause 3, and updated with the 12th Amendment. And essentially, uh, what it does is it makes sure that the less populated states have a bigger voice, it also um, 
encourages coalition building, uh, national campaigning, because in the hopes of winning, a candidate has to have support from all different parts of the country. If we had no electoral college, only the biggest cities would be needed to win the election. But because of the electoral college, our candidates need to go to Iowa and New Hampshire. They need to go to the rural areas and the farm areas and the different parts. So they have to get a little bit of all of these areas in order to pull it off. They can't just appeal to just one part of our country. And, you know, and historically we've seen that all pure democracies don't work. They implode. They, uh, as uh, uh, John Adams uh, put it, uh, there's never been a democracy that didn't commit suicide. The Electoral College protects us from that and, en- and encourages um, a more um, broad campaign that includes all the people. I mean, if there was no Electoral College, you know, uh, the, the candidate wouldn't bother to go to West Virginia or Iowa or New Hampshire or or Rhode Island because you know not enough votes. Well, who cares if you if you only need the biggest cities? So it really protects us from that kind of um, a despotic and and, and po- potentially tyrannical government that could er- e- be erected if uh, only one part of the country is convinced to vote for someone, and that's all that's needed. Well, what would you say to protesters who are calling for a pure democracy who feel like? their voices aren't being heard because of the Electoral College. What would you say to them? Our voices are heard not just by voting. Our voices are also heard by what we do. Uh, Their protesting is a wonderful thing as long as they keep it peaceful. Now, when they start getting violent and, and, you know, they're they're crying like a bunch of snowflakes, well, that's a whole different story. But, you know, being involved like that or visiting your representatives, uh, doing what you can to influence representatives, that's a part of what a republic is about. The problem is they're convinced as a democracy. They think that their vote is all that matters. Second of all, their vote would mean less if it was a national popular vote. Unless you live in Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, Philadelphia, New York City, unless you live in those cities, your vote in a national popular vote will not matter. So if they think their vote doesn't matter now, under national popular vote, their vote would mean less. But once again, voting is not all there is to it. We're in a republic. Do what you can to influence your your officials. I'll give you an example. Elizabeth Powell is one of my favorite founding fathers, and it's a woman. Elizabeth Powell, her husband was Samuel Powell, and he was mayor of Philadelphia. And she and they had what what, what we would call today a bed and breakfast. And they would serve these opulent dinners to attract the the uh, <laughs> most important travelers. And after dinner, those men, those politicians, the, you know, John Adams and the, the, and the Thomas Jeffersons and the, and the George Washingtons of the day would then retreat to the parlor to light up their pipes and talk politics. Unlike most women of her time, Elizabeth Powell would follow them into that parlor and she'd argue politics with them. And she was actually very intelligent, very sh- sharp-witted, uh, pulled no punches. And, um, and it, it, through that, she developed relationships, and she actually became very good friends with George Washington. It was she that convinced him that Mr. President was an adequate title when everybody wanted to call him Your Highness or Your Excellency. It was she that convinced him to serve a second term. He had written three people, Madison, Jefferson, and her, about not de- not desiring serving a second term, and it was she that convinced him, saying, George, this new system, you are the rock, you are the foundation. If you abandon it, the people will abandon it. We need you to serve a second term. It was she that did that. That's how you keep a republic, going back to the importance of what we do. Voting is not all of it. Your voice can be heard beyond just voting. That's a wonderful way of phrasing it. And it's very interesting to hear that example of of Ms. Powell. I hadn't heard that one before. Here we are with Douglas V. Gibbs, radio host, author, constitution instructor, and Fox News contributor. And also in light of this election, do you believe that there could be a new era of conservatism and constitutionalism in in light of the election and potential new judges on the Supreme Court in coming years? I would hope so, but we have to understand something. The way to fix the federal government is not through the federal government. Our problem is we think that if we just put the right federal government people in place, then everything will be fine. And it's it's like people who support term limits, for example. And I'm not necessarily a big supporter. I mean, I understand it, uh, why why people want it, but I'm not necessarily a supporter because 
even if you had term limits, when those people in Washington are gone, who are they being replaced by? The same kind of people who came up from below. Well, how do we then fix it? By making sure that locally we're putting the right people in. I have this, I love to call the people in Washington cockroaches. It's like they live in the cesspool. And I tell people, what good is replacing the cockroaches and complaining about the cockroaches in Washington if we're breeding them locally? So really it all starts locally. And that's the, and that's, if we're going to turn this country into a constitutional direction, get back to your original question, we have to educate locally and we have to put the right people in locally. When I say educate locally, that's actually something that I am very involved in. Um, and when I say, say educate, I don't just mean people who are already so-called conservative. I mean everybody. Now, in, in that regard, w- what efforts are you taking to spread the message about the Constitution and and get it to the point where we are um, localizing things and trying to change the government from the outside rather than the inside? Well, you know, uh, one of the things that I explain to people is it took a very long time for us to get to this point. So we can't flip the switch and it suddenly be fixed. It's going to take a long, hard journey. And so it may not even occur within my lifetime, hopefully within yours. Um, but that said, the efforts, uh, I've, I started back in 2008. I began teaching a Constitution class in Temecula, California. That has now spread to four classes. When I say classes, I mean my own. They're at uh, outside locations. Uh, the public school system wants nothing to do with me. <laughs> but uh, uh, So I have one in Temecula, Lake Elsinore, Corona, and Banning, California. Now, that those efforts have grown, and I've started to get a little bit of attention. Um, you know, and you, you've mentioned Fox News a few times. I've been on Fox News five times. They've invited me back. Uh, uh, I'm gonna be uh, on again soon. I've been on Al Jazeera back when they were uh, a network. I've been on a bunch of other networks. Um, I've got two uh, television hosts with local shows also wanting me to become a regular commentator. Why? Because I've made a point to be solid on what I do regarding the Constitution. I don't waver. Now, that said, I, I, uh, I, I have garnered the attention of an organization called the Congress of Racial Equality, CORE. It's an old, it's a, the organization that's been around for a long time, and they would like to be the conservative alternative to the NAACP. And they have the idea of spreading Constitution literacy in minority neighborhoods. But how to do that? And as someone who knew about my work, uh, inform them about what I do, and so they have since hired me, and we're, we're going to start in February, as a matter of fact, with our program, to start putting Constitution classes and civics classes, out, the extracurricular, outside the school system, in minority neighborhoods for Hispanics and blacks specifically, that's who we're targeting, to help and to help Hispanics, especially folks that are new to this country, maybe the dreamers, to patriotically assimilate or learn how to, and to learn more about what a limited government system is all about. That sounds like a wonderful coalition that you are helping with there, and I'm sure it's going to go very well. There are many who are eager to learn, uh, and so I thank you for joining me today, and thanks for so vigilantly seeking to protect our Constitution. There are few out there, but people like you are the ones who make all the difference. Well, the pleasure is all mine, and uh, it's been a pleasure knowing you and an honor knowing you. Thank you for all of your hard work. Well, thank you, Mr. Gibbs. This has been Mr. Douglas V. Gibbs, Fox News contributor, author, radio host, and Constitution instructor. I'm Ryan Kelly Murphy, and this is Radio Free Hillsdale 101.7 FM.